in this video, we're going to talk about how to measure internal energy. Um, and we're going to do it with a bomb calorimeter, which we can keep at a constant volume. And this is why that's important. Um, if our internal energy is equal to heat and work, and our work expression is really about the change in volume at a pressure, then if we can keep the volume constant, that change in volume has to be zero. And if that change in volume is zero, our work is zero, and then the actual change in the internal energy of our reaction becomes equal to the heat that's transferred. And so we can really simplify this by how we design our experiment, which is really cool. So let's look at a bomb calorimeter. They look like this. Uh, and so you have this heavily insulated vat or something like that, like container. And in it, you have the, the bomb. And the bomb really is just a container that will hold a constant volume no matter what. And so you can put a material inside it and you have a, a wire that runs it so you can ignite it um, with a, a little electrical spark. And you have a, a gas valve to let gas in under pressure. So you could put like a gas in there and ignite it. And uh, around that constant volume bomb <laughs> uh, or container, very rigid, is uh, water. And that's what the vat is filled with. The vat is filled with water and it has something that's stirring it. So that way it's going to stay at a constant temperature. And as it absorbs heat, it'll distribute it evenly throughout all of the water in that vat. And then you have a thermometer and you're measuring the temperature of the water outside of this fixed volume device that a substance is being ignited in. And you're looking at the change in temperature of that water, and that's going to represent the heat that is absorbed or released into the, the bomb part of the calorimeter. And so if we can understand the heat capacity, the amount of energy it takes to change that temperature of this system, then we'll be able to say, oh, well, when we see a specific temperature change, we know it corresponds to this release of or abs absorption of energy on part of whatever it is we ignited, the reaction we're looking at. And so we're going to work with this premise that the internal energy change is going to be equal to that heat transfer for the reaction when our volume is constant. So that means that our reaction that we're looking at here with this bomb calorimeter, that heat of the reaction, it's really gonna be equal to the opposite of the heat of the calorimeter. So the reaction, if it releases heat, that'll be the same amount of heat will be absorbed by the system, which in this case is the calorimeter and the other way, right? They'll always be the opposite because the heat's gonna transfer between the reaction and the calorimeter. So let's define that heat of the calorimeter. It's going to be equal to the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature. And since this is a fixed system, right, like we have created this experiment, it's not going to change mass at all. We don't need to use the specific heat of the calorimeter. We can just use the heat capacity. Um, and so we don't have to account for a uh, different mass of an object at all. Uh, we'll be looking at this heat of a reaction through the lens of this calorimeter so we can tune our value to just that of the calorimeter. So we'll just use the heat capacity of it. This is something you would have to find experimentally for your calorimeter. And then we'll multiply it by the change in temperature. So that'll give us the heat of the calorimeter. The opposite sign of that will be the heat of the reaction and that is equal to our internal energy change for the reaction. And so we can say that that internal energy change for the reaction is really equal to the opposite of that heat capacity of the calorimeter times the temperature. Pretty cool. Let's walk through an example uh, because I know I set uh, just like lined up a whole bunch of different equalities there and that can get a little hard to follow. All right, so we have a 35.6 gram sample of ethanol. It's burned in a bomb calorimeter. Um, according to the reaction below, which is the ethanol plus oxygen will give us carbon dioxide and water. Now, if the temperature rose from 35 to 76 degrees Celsius in the calorimeter, and the heat capacity of the calorimeter was determined to be 23.3 kilojoules per degree Celsius, what is the change in energy for the reaction? 
So we're told that we have 35.6 grams of our ethanol. We also know that the temperature of our bomb calorimeter is going to rise from 35 to 76 degrees Celsius. And the heat capacity of the calorimeter has already been measured. And it's 23.3 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So one thing that we can do right away is start figuring out what is this change in energy that occurs for the sample. And looking at that, the change in energy, remember, that change in energy of the reaction will be equal to the heat transfer of the reaction, so the heat of the reaction. And we've already determined that that is equal to the negative of the heat of the calorimeter. And that heat of the calorimeter is then equal to the, the Q cal is that specific, or sorry, the heat capacity of the calorimeter times its change in temperature. So we can determine that by plugging in our values for that heat capacity and the change in temperature that we see. So that's gonna be the 23.3 kilojoules per degree Celsius times my final temperature, which is my 76.0 degrees Celsius, minus my initial temperature of 35.0 degrees Celsius. Remember that initial is always subtracted from our final temperature. And so plugging this in to my calculator, I'm gonna get an energy of the reaction that's uh, equal to that negative 23.3 times the change in temperature, which will be a value of negative 955.3 kilojoules. So, but that's the energy of the reaction for 35.6 grams. Um, we need to communicate how much energy was released by an amount of ethanol. And so the easiest way to do this to be able to apply it to other situations is to report that energy per mole of ethanol that reacts. And so what we're going to do, or mole of the reaction, better yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that 35.6 gram sample to um, calculate the number of moles of the reaction. And so that moles of reaction, um, is gonna be equal to, so if we take this whole reaction here, we can say that one mole, we, we, we can pull mole ratios out, right? We know one mole of our ethanol is equal to three moles of our O2, is equal to two moles of our carbon dioxide, is equal to three moles of our water. And so when we have these ratios of our reactants and products, we have our reaction. And so all of this is really equal to one mole of the reaction. So if I was measuring the amount of, of oxygen in this reaction instead, and I was like, well, this amount of oxygen is consumed in this combustion reaction. And I would then, to convert this into the number of moles of my reaction I had, I, I would divide it by three, because I knew I would need three moles of oxygen for every one kind of reaction component that occurs. But our, our ethanol has a mole ratio already of one, and so the moles of ethanol will equal the moles of the reaction. And so this is gonna be equal to our 35.6 grams times our one mole divided by 46, 46.07. And that's the molar mass. I'm just doing a grams to moles conversion for our ethanol. Um, and that's gonna give me uh, 0 0.773 moles of ethanol, which will be the moles of my reaction. And so I can plug this value in here. And so this will be our negative 955.3 that we calculate for the amount of energy that we measure divided by the number of moles that went into the reaction. And, and that's going to give us a change in internal energy that we can report in kilojoules per mole so that someone can take that number and make a prediction without having to do all of this math knowing and know that it was 35.6 grams of ethanol as well. And so the value we get for this is negative 1,235.8 kilojoules per mole. 
And so that's how I would represent the change in energy for this reaction, the combustion of ethanol.